Hello everyone, today I will explain how you can use the Estelcam V12 version together with the Erasus Red Series CNC machine. Of course, you can also use other CAM software. When you purchase the Erasus Red Series CNC machine, you also get the Estelcam V12 version. Since it is a very easy CAM software to learn, let's focus on what Estelcam can do today. You can perform 2D and 2.5D cuts with Esselcam. What is a 2D cut? It's actually very simple. It's the cut made by the end mill at a 90 degree angle. The end mill makes only vertical movements as it goes deeper. Let's see this right away on the Aresis Red Series CNC machine. We cannot obtain inclined surfaces with the 2D cutting technique. However, it is very easy to create a 2D cutting project in Esselcam, and it is often the first choice of cutting technique because 2D cutting meets our needs in most cases. To be able to make a 2D cut, you need to have prepared your drawing with the file formats you see on the screen right now. In addition, you can also convert drawings prepared in other formats to be suitable for 2D cutting using the Convert to 2D option in Estelcam VR12. Let me show you an example for both of these situations. I have opened my drawing file prepared in a format suitable for 2D cutting without any problems. Now I'm opening an STL file to try the Convert to 2D feature. It asks me which area I want to prepare the 2D drawing of. I choose the inclined area to make it a bit challenging. Yes, it created the 2D drawing. It created it similar to the view when looking at the drawing from above. This working principle is an important small detail, but it is useful to know. I will come back to the details of 2D cutting in a moment. Before that, I want to give you some information about the 2.5D cutting technique. So what if we want to create inclined surfaces? For example, a sphere, a mountain, or a relief. Then we should use the 2.5D cutting technique. In order to use the 2.5D cutting technique, we definitely need drawing files prepared in a file format suitable for it. You can see which formats you can use on the screen right now. In Estelcam, this method is actually calculated almost automatically. There are very few parameters that we determine, so it is very easy to use. Okay, let's start examining the detailed features of 2D cutting. I've opened a drawing file suitable for showing almost all the features. Let's start with the panel on the top right. This panel is where the properties of the end mills are defined, and it is very important. Let's start defining the properties of a new end mill by clicking on the empty space at the bottom of this panel. Okay, first I'm giving the end mill a name. Let it be A4. The next value it asks is the diameter of the end mill. Let's say it's four millimeters in diameter. The Z plus value, this value is very, very important. This value determines how deep the end mill will go at most in one go. For example, we have a four millimeter thick aluminum plate and we will cut it all the way through. If we set the Z plus value to 1.5 millimeters, the end mill will first go down to a depth of 1.5 millimeters and start cutting. After completing the cutting at the level, it will go down to a depth of three millimeters and complete the cutting again. There is only one millimeter thickness left in our plate. In this case, the end mill will not go down to a depth of 4.5 millimeters. No, it will go down to a depth of 4 millimeters and complete the cutting. The part where the thickness of the plate will be defined is not in this panel. I will also show you how the total depth is determined in a moment. Another variable of ours is the A value. The A value allows the end mill to make an angled descent for an easier descent. I recommend making angled descents. The FXY value determines the feed rate of the end mill in the X and Y axis. This value is also very important. It is important to to enter different speed values for different materials. For example, we cannot cut stainless steel at the speed at which we can cut aluminum. Slower cuts are required for stainless steel. The F's value also represents the cutting speed, but expresses the downward speed in the Z axis. Finally, the RPM value of the end mill. This value is also very important. The Aresis Red Series CNC machine can cut at a maximum of 18,000 RPM. If we click on the symbol at the very beginning of this panel, we can define more parameters in the new window that opens. Yes, we see 10 types of mills shown with visual on the right side of the window that opens. We can determine the type of mill we want to cut from here. Let's see what types of mills there are. The straight end mill is the most used end mill type. The tip angle mill, the ball nose. This mill type is very good, especially for creating inclined surfaces. There are three more specialized mills for creating a special surface by finishing the corners, a drill bit for drilling only, and a mill for creating a thread. The value below the diameter value indicates how many blades the mill has. For example, since this mill has three cutting blades, I set this value to three. Let's look at the other 
values that appear next to it. You can examine them all one by one. I want to mention a few that I think are important. Step over. This is a very important tool. With step over, we determine what percentage of the end mill will be used. The more we decrease this value, the less the end mill will be stressed, but the cutting time will also increase accordingly. I usually give values between 50 and 80. However, a cut must be made where the end mill will inevitably cut with a percentage value of 100 when it first starts cutting. If we want to cut without using 100% of the end mill at any time, there's a very logical reason for this desire. For example, if we want to cut stainless steel, it will stress this end mill much more compared to other materials, especially if the diameter value of the end mill is very small, such as 1 millimeter or 2 millimeters. The probability of the end mill breaking is very high. To prevent this situation, we should use the trochoidal step over tool. When we use this tool, the cutting time increases a little, but it is a much more logical and less time consuming method than trying to protect the end mill by reducing the Z plus or FXY values. So how does this method work? Instead of cutting in a straight line, it progresses by making a circular cut. I definitely recommend using it for difficult materials like stainless steel. The smaller you set this value, the less the end mill will be stressed. But if you set it too small, the cutting time may increase a lot. The trochoidal width value is also a tool that determines another parameter that works together with the trochoidal step over tool. It determines how far the end mill will go to the side. Yes, we have seen quite a few tools and many types of parameters that we can determine. Now I'm starting to create cutting paths using these. Yes, we are currently seeing the drawing I designed in SketchUp. My main goal is to produce an L-shaped part and to produce eight pieces of this L-shaped part. I have an aluminum plate that is 132 millimeters wide, 207 millimeters long, and 30 millimeters thick, and I ordered it so that its width and length fit perfectly inside the L-shaped parts I want to produce. However, the thickness of the L-shaped parts I want to produce needs to be 28 millimeters, but my plate is 30 millimeters thick. Now let's determine what processes we can do to realize this production. Yes, let's take a look at the menu on the left. The Select tool allows you to select the cutting paths you have prepared and readjust the cutting path parameters. The selected cutting path turns red. The Part tool is a tool used to create a cutting path. The feature of this tool is to create a cutting path on the outer part of the selected drawing. The Hole tool does the exact opposite of the Part tool. It creates a cutting path inside the selected drawing. Engraving this tool allows you to create a cutting path that will pass exactly over the selected line, zero. This tool is very important. It determines the position of the local origin point. The local origin point we defined in the Open Builds program matches the zero point we defined in Estelcam, and the cutting paths are referenced to this point. Usually the bottom right corner of the drawing is selected, but if you want to define a new location, you should use this tool. Let me change the zero point for you in a few different ways. Okay, now I'm going to restore the zero point to its original state. The drill tool should be used when a drill bit is installed. Do not use this feature with a normal end mill. The whole drilling technique of end mills should be defined very differently. You can delete the previously created erroneous drawings by clicking on the X mark in the menu at the bottom left. In this window that opens on the bottom right, we can define very important parameters or have extra processes done. I will explain some of them while creating cutting paths. Let's see what the ones I don't need for now are used for. The start tool determines the height at which the end mill will start cutting. If there is no previously cut area or material to be cut in that area, we want the end mill to go directly to the area where it will cut to save time. In this case, you can use the Start tool. The Tab tool is one of the very important tools. With the Tab tool, a bridge is created to prevent the cut part from being disconnected from the plate. In this way, when the cutting of the last layer is completed, the cut part does not separate from the plate and fly away. The height next to it determines the thickness of this bridge. The objective is to reduce the plate's thickness from 30 millimeters to 28 millimeters. To save time, I will use an 8 millimeter diameter end mill and set the Z plus value to 1 millimeter, performing the task in two passes. After selecting the end mill, the selected tool's color in the top right panel changed, indicating which tool will be used to generate the cutting paths. I click on the part tool and select the outermost line. I could have used the hole tool for this operation, but cleaning a slightly larger area reduces the likelihood of errors in this specific project. 
Estelcam generated a single cutting path that forms a frame. I want the entire selected area to be cut. To achieve this, I use the pocket tool, which processes the entire area. If desired, I can specify the cutting pattern using the pocketing tool. Let's change the cutting direction. While this is not critical for this project, I wanted to demonstrate this feature. Now, let's set up the parameters for thinning the plate by two millimeters. The cutting depth tool asks how deep the cut should be, and I select two millimeters. I will complete the other cutting paths using a four millimeter diameter end mill. Therefore, I'll save this project and continue. I save the cam project using the Save CNC Program tool in the File menu. It asks for the unit of measurement, and I select millimeters. After pressing OK, it prompts me to name the file and select a folder to save it in. I name the file 8D2 and save it. Estelcam generated the G-code file for me. Since the remaining cutting task will be done with the 4mm end mill, a single CAM project will suffice. The circular holes in my L-shaped parts are for M6 screws. Let's begin by creating these holes. I select the hole tool and click on all the circles. Cutting paths are generated for all of them, but I don't want to set the depth individually for each. Therefore, I need to select all of them together. In Esselcom, this can be done by selecting the Select tool, clicking on one of the holes, which turns red to indicate selection, and then holding the Shift key while selecting the others. Now all holes are selected. I'll set the total depth to 29 millimeters. Going one millimeter deeper is not an issue because I will mount the aluminum plate onto a wooden plate. This is crucial for a reason I'll explain shortly. I also want these holes to be cut first. To determine this, I'll use the No tool, which prioritizes the lowest number. That's done. Let's say the Aresis Red Series CNC machine has completed cutting the holes. After this step, I will put the machine into standby mode using the Open Build software and insert screws into the holes. This will secure the aluminum plate to the wooden plate, preventing the L-shaped parts from shifting when cut and separated from the aluminum plate. This is why it was important to cut the holes first, and now that's completed. As a second step, I can use the Part tool to select all my L-shaped parts and start cutting. However, this wouldn't be practical. Why? A 28 millimeter deep channel is quite significant, and and cutting in such a narrow area relative to the end mill's diameter would cause excessive chip accumulation. This buildup would eventually hinder the end mill's movement, potentially causing it to break. How do I know this? I've experienced it before. To prevent this, I need to create additional channels for chip evacuation. How? It's simple. Using the Part tool, I select the outline. With the new path created, I use the Select tool and hold Shift to select all paths. They turn red, indicating selection. I then use the Island tool from the bottom right menu. This creates cutting paths around the l shape parts without affecting them. I set the total depth and sequence it as the second step, then save the project. However, I won't proceed like this as there's likely no issue, but I'd like to demonstrate other features while ensuring effective chip removal. So I delete the second cutting path and redo it. First, I cut the outer edges of the L-shaped parts, followed by the inner regions. This allows time for chip removal, ensuring better evacuation, but the drawing lacks a dividing wall between these two regions. How can we manage this? It's straightforward. Manually define the regions. Here's how. After selecting the Part tool, I use the Manual Shape Detection tool to define the region by clicking on points individually. Zooming in on the drawing reveals more points for precision. Great, I've defined the cutting path. I then use the Part tool to select the outer contour. By merging these paths and using the Island tool, I create the desired cutting map. I set the cutting sequence to 20 and assign it as the second step with a total depth of 29 millimeters. Now for the final step, chip accumulation is no longer an issue. I use the hole tool and manually define the cutting paths. Afterward, I want to cut everything else. I've mapped the cutting paths in the shortest possible routes without gaps. After setting the sequence to 30 and the total depth to 29 millimeters, I save the project using the Save CNC Program tool.
Let's see how to perform 2.5D cutting. I prepared a drawing consisting of two nested spheres with highly curved surfaces. Let's see how we can produce it. In the window that opens, we must first select the surface we want to process correctly. This step is also important if we are performing 2D cutting using the Convert to 2D option. I select the Block Machining tool. This option will automatically set most of the parameters for me. Estelcom is quite successful in 2.5D cutting. It is possible to carry out the cutting smoothly by defining very few parameters. A window showing my drawing and parameters has opened. The list of end mills in the top right corner, as seen in 2D cutting, is the same here, and all the parameters we define in that window are identical to what I described earlier. Around the drawing, a gray area represents the plate I mounted. To adjust this area's size, we'll use the margin tool. Entering the diameter of the largest end mill you'll use into the margin margin tool ensures a safe clearance. You can also set larger dimensions if you prefer. The depth limit tool works like a secondary Z plus tool. The computing precision tool expresses the calculation precision. In 2.5D cutting, creating a cutting map is much more complex than in 2D cutting, and some values are rounded to approximate values to simplify the computation process. This tool allows us to determine the amount of rounding. The lowest value ensures calculations are made with the most accurate values, but significantly extends the calculation time. If you have a high-performance computer, I recommend keeping this value as small as possible. To define the zero point, we must select one of these three options. The roughing tool refers to the initial process. In the first cut, the final surface is not created, but a large amount of material is removed and most of the cutting process is completed. If you use larger diameter end mills with the roughing tool, you can significantly shorten the cutting time. The tool tool directly below determines which end mill will be used. The allowance tool represents the remaining margin in the initial process. If you set this length to less than half of the Z plus value of the end mill you'll use in the final process, the finishing end mill will work comfortably. The five patterns here represent how the cut will be made. I recommend selecting the same pattern for both the initial and final processes. Set the allowance tool's value to zero for the final process so that your drawing is produced exactly with all its details. Yes, we have adjusted all the parameters. First, I will click on the Create CNC Program button with only the roughing tool selected. In the window that opens, I click the OK button. When I name my project and select the folder where it will be saved, the calculation process will begin. The calculation process is complete, and my first cutting project has been created. Now, I will repeat the same process with only the finishing tool selected. When I run these projects sequentially in open builds, I will have produced the desired part. Let's see how to perform 2.5D cutting. 